The BBI ship is docking in Narok today, the Ma County. And uh, in the run up to this meeting, in the past two weeks or so, Raila Molodinga has shown his genius. He has managed to put the Ma leaders together, leaders from different political persuasions, leader, leaders who hitherto have been almost enemies to the point of never being able to shake hands. Raila has managed to put them together. This brings me to the question of the strategy Raila is using. Raila's hunting skills. Like a lion, he has learned to isolate and attack. But before I talk about Raila and his skills in bringing the Maasai together, I must bring out the Ma question so that if someone listens to me before this meeting, they could have something to say. I support Senator Ladema Olekina in his concern about the Ma people. The Maasai people have been wronged in this country for over 100 years, perhaps more than anybody else. They have been dispossessed of their land. Their community has been separated. Trucks and trucks of their land has been taken away by force. The Samburu people, for example, are forced to watch their animals die during dry season as foreigners sit on thousands of acres of fertile land with green pasture, all in the name of conservancy. People are sitting on trucks, huge trucks of land in Samburu. People who are not even Kenyans. Some owners who have never even stepped in Kenya. Some people who own trucks of land inherited from their grandparents and the Samburu are suffering. This situation has to change in the interest of this country. So I support Ladema Olekina when he says my issues must be addressed. Because honestly speaking, we are sitting on a time bomb. As we continue to ride on the wheel, uh, willing seller, willing buyer thing, and we, dis we make the Maasai lose their land, a time will come when Maasai youth, jobless, not educated, all their land having been sold by their fathers who did not understand the intricacies, the intricacies of land ownership. Some of the people are blaming on Ladema Olekina for talking about my issues and my land are the same people who blame the colonial powers for signing treaties with the Africans. They say the Africans could not have signed those treaties to give away land because those Africans were illiterate people. They didn't know the meaning of land ownership. The same people are blaming Olekina when he's talking about Maasai land. It cannot be willing seller, willing buyer in Maasai land when the intricacies of modern economy, of land ownership, land tenure system is not clear to the average Maasai. We are therefore creating a time bomb and we must put a stop or at the very least we must hold a conversation on how to treat the Maasai land issue because it is a time bomb. I therefore support Olekina and there is nothing wrong with Olekina talking about the Maasai talking about Maasai issues in Narok today because at Sagana the Kikuyus talked Kikuyu issues. The Mount Kenya people who met in Embu, if you went in that room, there were people who were not from Mount Kenya. They were from Rift Valley and elsewhere. The only reason why they went there is because they are originally Mount Kenya speaking people. So there's nothing wrong with that. Now back to the Maasai and how they were able to get together. Cut us off, Raila. I begin to see that many people, 
misunderstand this issue of BBI. They do not understand how BBI is being used as a strategy by Raila. And today I just want to highlight a few things. What Raila is doing using the BBI is to ensure that people who are not compliant are either isolated or brought to the fore. The tactic he has used to bring the Maasai together shows that that is the intended plan. In Western Kenya, for example, those who did not attend the Buhungu rally are now orphans. People like Alwale, they are Washali, they are orphans. They can even see it. They are feeling the cold. Others like Mvuri are the cause who didn't want to participate in this are slow puncher politicians. They have been punctured but the puncture is slow, so that he will go up to 2022, but that will be the end of him. You go in other corners of the country, and you find some people have sensed it, they have smelled the coffee, and they have come on board. By bringing governors into, into this thing, what Raila is intending to do with the tacit approval of the president, Uru Kenyatta, is to ensure that all leaders are a BBI compliant. That will isolate Ruto. Something else it will do, it will leave the people on the ground feeling cold. They will drift towards some further figure. All of us, as Fruit will tell us, are in need of a further figure in our life from the time we are young. In the politics, a county, a community, a region will knowingly or unknowingly drift towards a, f a father figure. There will always be a father figure. So what Raila is doing, by bringing all these governors together, he is making it impossible for the people on the ground to relate with Ruto because he's up there and the leaders in the regions are all now in BBI. And because of the issues at play, because of how they are being brought in, because of why the governors are playing ball, why they are cooperating, and because to the governors, including those who don't know, there will be no illusion about this compliance. Do not think you'll pretend you are compliant with BBI and at night you go somewhere. That will not work. Next, according to Raila's game plan, will now to go a little lower and get the MPs including those who are now dancing tanga tanga, and draw them into BBI in much the same way the governors have been drawn into BBI. Because whatever reasons were there for governors to come into BBI can very easily be replayed <laughs> in reference to the members of parliament. So what situation are you going to, to have? Soon in the entire country, Soon in the entire country, we are going to have all leaders BBI compliant, leaving Ruto isolated. Even in Mount Kenya, if you are a keen observer, if you have looked at Mwangi Kyunjuri, Amengia Baridi, if you look at some people like Moses Kuria, they are beginning to pale. And sure enough, through that isolation strategy, Sure enough, through that as isolation strategy that is reinforced by the stick and the carrot approach, we will soon have almost all the leadership in this country, save perhaps for Rift Valley. All of them. And like I've said before, even in the Rift Valley, once William Samoy Ruto has been isolated sufficiently after a number of strategies have come to play, some including those of his own creation, like his association with, for example, Rashid, Rashid Echesa and all the issues surrounding the gun drama. Once all these things have been brought to bear on his political game, once his lieutenants have been made to, to leave him and join the BBI, he will begin to look weak. At that time, Gideon Moy, 
begins to be more attractive than he is now. That is the point I've been trying to make. I've not been saying that Gideon Moy is stronger than Ruto. Far from it. There is no comparison between the two, at least for now. But once Ruto has been isolated, once he has been made weak, once he begins to look desperate and begins to act in desperation, once things like those Rashid Chesa gun issues begin to affect him and he begins to wobble, some people in the Rift may begin naturally and psychologically and politically begin to drift towards Gideon Moy. That is the point I was trying to make. At that point, William Samoy will really be isolated because it is natural in politics, very natural, that people want to associate with the winning side. For this morning, I want to say that Raila seems to be succeeding in the manner in which he has handled the Maasai issue. He seems to be succeeding. And I can see, unless William Samoy Ruto, unless he changes tact, his reliance on regional leaders will be his undoing. Because in the Mount Kenya region, for example, he has a vast majority of elected leaders. But as Raila continues to hit at those leaders and make them inevitably join the BBI, Ruto then will have no access to those regions. He will have problem accessing Rift, uh, Rift uh, Central Kenya, for example. The recent Embu issue comes to play, to mind. Look, you rely to le on leaders to invite you to church functions and other functions. But while you are there, you can notice for the past six months or so, the provincial administration, government functionaries are not in your meeting. So you are lucky because you are the leaders. You have the leaders. What then happens to William Samoy Ruto? Once these leaders, all of them leave and join BBI, in the manner in which governors we never thought would join BBI have joined BBI. Once these MPs Ruto relies on, for example in Mount Kenya, once they join BBI, as I suspect they are soon going to, using this Raila strategy, how, will he, how then will he access the ground? When administration is not with him, government administration is not with him, that is clear now, and the leaders have been made to, to leave him, desert him and join BBI. That is the question Ruto must be handling and dealing with today as we wait to see what the Maasai community will say at Narok today.